everyone, and welcome back to Meet the Ecamm fam. We're hanging out here in the test studio, and it's going to be a lot of fun today because I somehow convinced Martin to join us, and he is probably one of the most adventurous of the live streamers in the Ecamm community. So if you don't know who he is yet, it's going to be fun. Get ready, <laughs> ready for some, some adventures as we play around with Ecamm here live for you and with you. If you have any questions for Martin during this broadcast or later during the replay, just throw a cue and a colon in front of them. We'll be sure to get to them and circle back up if you're watching us on the replay. You haven't missed it. We promise we'll answer your questions later, but we're really excited to be hanging out. And I have a couple of these upcoming in the next few weeks. So I know we've been on a little bit of a hiatus from Meet the Fam as I've been traveling a bunch, but back here and excited to hang out with all of you. Um, and if you are watching live or on the replay and you want to be a guest on this show, all you need to do is leave me a comment or uh, tag me in a post in the community or on our Discord or send me an email, katie at ecam2ms.com and I'd be more than happy to bring you on and show off your studio and let everyone get to know you and what you are doing, all of the amazing things. It looks like we have the usual crew here. <laughs> hey to Parker. Hey to Mr. Moderator, who's pulling double duty this week at Ecamm Live Academy and hanging out here. We have Tatiana on. It's so good to see you. And Todd, who's coming on really soon on To Meet the Fam. So I'm excited to talk all things Christmas. My all-time favorite holiday. I cannot wait to decorate like crazy all over, all over the house. Well, without further ado, let me pull up my amazing bio for Martin. So if you don't know Martin, Martin was a face-to-face -face, uh, events organizer promoting everything through LinkedIn until COVID hit. And he was forced to pivot and really think through how he was going to approach things. So now he's a regular on LinkedIn Live, interviewing a variety of guests. The journey was fun and started with Ecamm's Vlogmas, which is just around the corner. <laughs> and was complimented by two runs through Adrian Salisbury's Pro Video Academy. Academy. Martin is incredible at experimenting and getting creative with Ecamm Keynote, layers, animations, green screen, and more. And as I said, he is really active in the Ecamm live community. So if you're not over there with us yet, you can go to ecamm.tv slash community and you could get to know him and me and the whole crew a lot better. Welcome, Martin. Thanks so much for being here. Hi. Good morning, good evening, good lunchtime, <laughs> whatever it is, wherever you are. Exactly. I know it's lunchtime for you. I know, I know, and you're so patient. Ken and I ran out for sandwiches, and then we, like, our whole town is filled with scarecrows, so we had to stop to, stop to, to identify and hang out with some of the people working on their scarecrows here in town. It's a competition. We'll see who wins. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for being patient as I jumped on a little bit late, but so happy to have you here. I have just thoroughly loved watching your pop-up streams in the Ecamm community. So thanks for doing that. I, I think it's really great. You're one of the first, first people, maybe not the last, who just loves to experiment and play in that space. And I think it's exactly what we hoped the Ecamm community space would be. So I'm just really impressed by everything that you're doing there. Paul says, yay, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was on with Paul and Valerie the other week there, and uh, awesome. just briefly. But it, it's one of the things about the community is it's so great to meet people. And even yeah. like we haven't spoken before 10 minutes ago. Exactly. It kind of feels like people know one another. Yeah, we've uh, been friends the other for years. Of the world, right? <laughs> exactly. So, Exactly. And, and and yeah, so I'm I'm in there doing mad stuff. Anybody wants to go back and have a look at the community logs, you'll see some really terrible stuff from around about Blogmas last year. See, I, I would kinda... use the word innovative. <laughs> I would use innovative, innovative. instead of yeah, terrible. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I think I think what you're doing is really cool. And I agree. I think yeah. that I I think when we put ourselves out there, especially in the world of live video, you do end up with a bunch of people who, even though you've never spoken, you feel like you know really well because they're there in the comments or they're interacting with you in some way. Uh, so yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think yeah. Last last year and um, around Vlogmas time, I kind of opened the box, <laughs> and suddenly it was, oh, Ecam can do all of this. But God, I can add in Snapchat and mm, camera and layers and layers of keynote and oh, green screen. And then you could get so carried away with stuff. Um, yeah. Some of which 
looks like it's pointless at the time, but <laughs> you're learning as you go along and yeah. then you can apply those lessons to whatever it is that you actually do in, in real life. So I guess that's kind of what I've been doing in my sort of journey is a load of these things that look a bit mad. Suddenly, <laughs> if you bring them all together, they're kind of kind, kind of useful. Yeah. And, uh, certainly, certainly can make you look really, really different on, on camera. And, yeah. Uh, Stops the scroll. Have loads of fun. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So why, why don't you give us a little bit, Doc hates this question, but I'm going to ask this question every time anyway. <laughs> We'd love to hear a little bit about, about the beginning of that journey and, you know, and what your background is in, how you kind of stumbled your way into Ecamm and into this video space. <laughs> right. For all of those people watching, if you're ever afraid of being uh, the person doing the interviews, don't be afraid because you're the one who gets to say, tell me a little bit more about that. Exactly. And then, you, then your guest has to do all of the talking. Exactly. Right? So, See, yeah, over to you, Martin. <laughs> yeah, over to me. So, so yeah, I used to work um, in events or live events. Um, and this is where I should, I should really bring some video over the top, shouldn't I do? Of, bits of events going on in the background uh, for me there. And that's the kind of events that I was running at the time, maybe about 300 people all gathered uh, in a room with me, sort of conducting everything. And then really just overnight, um, it all fell apart due to COVID. Yeah. And I then had to sort of pick up the pieces and decide what I was going to do. Um, initially, uh, another company picked me up straight away, wow. so I, I went and worked for them for a year. Um, and then during that period, I, I sort of discovered Ecamm. Um, I think initially I seen a guy called Rob Geraghty doing something oh, on, Rob. Yeah. Um, on LinkedIn. Yeah. And, and it was just this little circle in the corner of his presentation. And I thought, hmm, I haven't seen that done before. <laughs> and this is less than two years ago that was the first time I'd seen that. Wow. And so I went off, um, had a look around YouTube, um, found a whole bunch of different videos going on with Ecamm, mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of people sort of jumping around enthusiastically and <laughs> dancing and That's how we like, like to that. do it, yeah. Oh, enthusiastic it dancing is our thing. <laughs> so I had to then wait for Adrian to appear because he was more my pace. Like so. <laughs> We didn't capture you so, at dancing next time. <laughs> just, you know, dad dancing, uh, you know, it wasn't going to be me. So, yeah. So I, I guess most of my audience are, are IT people. Mm -hmm. And as such, they're, they're possibly not, not the most outgoing, mm -hmm. um, not the most communicative, um, but they're also very, very difficult to please. Mm, so that's a good point. You know, just, you know, just me appearing in the corner of the screen that was never going to be good enough. Um, so that's when I started, you know, exploring the capabilities of Ecamm and seeing how far uh, that could take you. And I've ended up now in a position of doing a load of sort of LinkedIn live stuff. Mm -hmm. That's still, that's kind of still the wild west out there. It is. Because yeah. you know, I mean, unlike today's uh, show, you know, people are queuing up, they're waiting, they're engaging, they're dropping in comments. Mm -hmm. You really, really have to draw it out of them on, on LinkedIn Live. Um, so I, I, there's a few things I've learned along the way in terms of what to do with that. Um, one of those is when I'm running my intro, um, I always have a load of questions pop up in the intro. So it's running for two and a half oh, minutes. Oh, that's clever. But it's always saying, you know, please drop a comment in, please tell me where you're calling in from, mm -hmm. stuff like that in the actual intro. That's really and that's sometimes It kind of helps a bit because it gets the engagement going before things have started. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things about LinkedIn Live is that, uh, that people, people aren't queuing up and waiting and they are a little bit impatient. If you sit there for five minutes just sort of mooching around behind the screen, slightly blurred, mm -hmm. they're going to go away somewhere else and do something else mm -hmm. um, because, because that's what they do. Um, so if you want to really grab them, 
I think you need to have stuff going on on the screen and, and make them pay attention uh, as they're waiting for, for anything to start. So um, that was one of the things I found. The other thing about LinkedIn Live is people like to hide a bit as mm -hmm. well. Um, and that's because LinkedIn kind of exposes you to, to the world. Mm -hmm. So if, if you are a business person, and I'm doing a business uh, LinkedIn Live, and you say uh, something about my live, then suddenly every salesperson in the world <laughs> yeah. is, is chasing you down to say, oh, I see you looked at Martin's live. We've got an alternative to that. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of that kind of makes it quite difficult as well. Yeah. But what I've really found works well is just the interviewing people live and trying to make things look different from zoom these mm -hmm. people are in zoom and teams every day for hours and hours and hours yeah um, and to try and make it look a little bit different and a little bit engaging mm -hmm. i've tried all sorts of wacky things uh, over time uh, <laughs> and eventually come up with you know most of it is kind of keynote in the background yeah but but using uh, different techniques to uh, make it look a little bit more engaging and less sort of four boxes on a screen or whatever yeah um, and uh, and that kind of yeah that's led to some some real fun stuff and uh, and yeah playing out about with green screen as well um, you can get some really mad effects and you can jump about uh, all over the place and that that's kind of fun as well so i always enjoy yeah. like popping around and here we go stealing marshall <laughs> studio from him marshall hey, martin's marshall. in your house thanks. <laughs> thanks for the loan don't tell anyone yeah no i think i think I think that's really, really great feedback. And I, I, a lot of people in the chat here are excited to hear some LinkedIn Live tips because it is, you're right. I think it's a space where people want want to get in there because there's a ton of opportunities, but it is an absolutely different platform, even though it you can, you can certainly create video and live stream there. It's not the same audience at all. So it's good to keep in mind. Um, and Justice asked what your LinkedIn link is. How can people find you? I think you just search your name, or is there a different link that we can? Um, it, that's a, several good points in a row there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can you can just find me. It's very easy to find me. Uh, I've got a, quite a lot of followers on LinkedIn, so I tend to pop up quite easily. Mm -hmm. But unless you're hard selling, one of the things, <laughs> yeah, unless you're hard selling, yeah. Um, but. One of the things I mentioned earlier on is that people like to hide on LinkedIn and don't mm -hmm. necessarily want to appear on a live. Yeah. So one of the things that I do is uh, I will bring up a QR code uh, with my LinkedIn profile connection. Oh, okay. So, in fact, I make quite liberal use of QR codes. Yeah, they've been great do, lately. Yeah. Yeah, they can do stuff anonymously so they can sit. You know they're sitting with their phone anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So they've got their phone and they're looking at three different things as well as looking at you. Yeah. So if you've got a QR code that's just sitting in the corner there, and uh, I, I, one of the first things I say, if you're not already connected, go. I don't connect to everybody, which might be a bit of a lie, but <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say it's a special connection it's for you. It's an exclusive connection, yeah. Exclusive. Go click now. There's an amnesty. And, and I will connect with you if you go click on my QR code now. So people will do that during the course uh, of the show. Yeah. And then I also use it for links to things like um, registration for an event, mm -hmm. uh, additional downloads, uh, go see my website. Mm -hmm. So um, that's another way as you're going through um, your LinkedIn Live just to keep them watching the screen is tell them there's going to be a pop-up QR code every now and again and it will it, some fancy free downloads if you keep watching and if you keep scanning the QR codes and I find that that kind of works well as a way of just keeping people watching mm -hmm. and making sure they're not off to make a cup of tea and just listening no I actually do want you to watch the screen <laughs> um, so so there's a, yeah there's quite a lot that goes that goes on there um, through something as simple as QR codes. It, I find it very 
very useful. Um, and it doesn't take up a lot of screen space. You don't need to have the, the QR code sitting there as big as your head or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, it will work. Um, and now there's a load of little QR code generators that you can get and you can put your logo in the middle or have YouTube sitting in the middle of it or whatever yeah. else you want. Change the colors to match your backgrounds, uh, all those sort of things. It doesn't have to just be a black and white uh, square in the corner. So uh, it can be you know, quite a, a, a nice looking part of your overall scene, I think. So. Yeah. And you're showing, uh, yeah. you know, I think it, what's cool too about it is that you're showing them what's possible as well. Like you said, I think so many professionals have spent the last couple of years stuck in that Zoom grid where even the even the smallest difference <laughs> that Ecamm can let you do makes a really big impact. So something like being able to easily put a QR code on screen or, you know, using tools like Keynote or Prezi or any of these tools that make, you know, presentations feel a lot more immersive and part of the entire experience versus just at that, you know, like you were saying, that kind of video, maybe at most, you know, the little circle of you in the corner while the, the slides go by, that doesn't jump out to anyone anymore because that that is the norm of what, you know, most folks are expecting to see in a, you know, in a business professional video presentation environment. So I think it, I think it does give you a little bit of liberty to, to be able to play around and experiment. So I'm thrilled to hear you doing that. And it, Ooh. I think it does. I mean, I, you know, Marshall and I were talking a, a few months back about what we were going to do for the zoom promo video that we created. And it is that concept. You know, we say that almost everyone I've talked to that's an Ecamm customer, when they turn on Ecamm, even with no graphics or they're just improving their video quality and they show up into a zoom or into a teams, everyone's like, how, how are you doing that? Like, what, what, how come your camera is so much better than my camera? How do I look so much better? You know, how are you, how are you able to do those kinds of things? Because it, it does, it stands out or it looks different than what everyone else is with their cameras off or their cats running across the screen or, mm. their, or their, you know, crazy, like very you know, weird green screen backgrounds that are not the same level of quality as what you could do with a, with a physical green screen. And, um, a little bit of tweaking, right? Yeah. And um, I think <clears throat> probably the most common one I get is, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> where are you? Yeah. yeah. Wherever I want to be. Wherever I want to be. Yeah, I'm on the beach. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah. not, maybe not in your part of the world. But, but no, yeah. no. We do have a beach in Edinburgh, yeah, but uh, not, not one that you're going down not in your bikini. Not this time of year. Onto. Exactly, exactly. It's a woolly hat and wetsuit beach, yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> woolly hat and wetsuit. I love it. Yeah, yeah, and Jailbert's saying, yeah, definitely adding QR codes, I think, would is really smart. It's funny, I feel like QR codes were sort of on their way out or less popular, and then the pandemic hit, and you had, you know, restaurants and businesses that were using them all the time, and they've made a big resurgence, and they're great in live video, because you're right, everyone has their phone or their tablet or some other <laughs> distracting device that they have at the ready, so... It makes it easy to be able to connect for sure. Yeah. And I think that's a good point. And everyone's now used to it because, yeah. you know, they've been getting their cameras out to do menus at restaurants and stuff like that. And so it's kind of, oh, QR code. They're, they're often scanning it anyway mm -hmm. before you've even told them to because they kind of know that that's what they're meant to do when they see one now. Yeah. Um, so it, it's kind of basic 101, but uh, people actually do do it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've had people on an interview with me uh, getting their phone out and pointing at the screen <laughs> while they're being interviewed. And they're like, hang on, I'm listening. <laughs> that works. Yeah, it's taken you to that event. Yeah. Yeah, Ray, it has. Yeah, that's that's the idea, mate. So, um, so yeah, it's uh, it's one of those simple things. But, you know, uh, I, I think LinkedIn Live is one where you're just going to have to keep going and going and going. And eventually people will... Uh, uh, start to to follow um, on on LinkedIn Live, but yeah. it, it's a tough nut to crack. It really yeah. is um, more difficult. People are, are they're just not used to it. They're mm -hmm. not used to engaging, and so you're going to have to. It's like pulling teeth a bit, um, but but they get they get used to it. Mm -hmm. um, and once they do, they come back. And I yeah. think that's the big thing is. Uh, that, that your following keeps increasing and increasing. And uh, so just stick at it, keep turning up, and, and people will keep keep following. And, uh, and that's kind of where I've got to 
with LinkedIn Live, but lately, uh, taking Ecamm to a different place slightly, mm -hmm. uh, I've also been producing um, live proposals as well. Oh, awesome. So quite often um, I'm asked to produce proposals for people. And mm -hmm. that the way that normally works is you get um, a request for information, an mm -hmm. RFI, and they are asking me typically about software products because that's kind of my realm, if you like. Mm -hmm. And then you produce a massive document for them and send it back and they skim read it. And then you have some sort of going forth, back and forth on email and then back and forth with documents. And it's all a very long process. So I thought, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to respond by recording um, a personalized video Absolutely. for the recipient. Yep. But I'm going to break it down. So the first bit of the video will be very much um, for that particular proposal. So I start off and I do a sort of a fancy looking intro and uh, a load of um, stuff knitted together using templates. Mm -hmm. But it brings up the client's name uh, in big shiny letters and a fancy video front end. Then I'll come on and say, hey, Alex, thanks for thanks for letting us engage with you. Uh, we've created this special proposal for you. Um, the idea is that you can share it internally with all of your team. They can consume it on the bus or the tube or wherever they are, whenever they want to. And they don't have to you know, sit and read it uh, at infinitum. They can pause me. They can re call, uh, rewind me. They can delete me completely, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah. I, I can also share that with my own team as well, because typically it's not just me. There might be five or six people involved in any bid process. So if I do that with myself and with my client, then everybody's singing off the same hymn sheet. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to organize all their diaries to get 12 people in the room at the yeah, same time. Yeah, because that can be really tough, yeah. But it can be really hard work. Mm -hmm. um, but they'll all know what's going on. And the core content of the video, I can repurpose. It's yeah. a bit like um, this kind of repurposing podcasts and stuff like this that yeah. you've been talking about this week. So I can say, right, this, this bit of product demo that I'm doing in a minute, I can just say, Hey, Alex, we're now going to a product demo for you. Mm -hmm. And then I just use a transition and then I'll run into a pre-recorded demo section. Yeah. And then I'll finish the demo and then I'll come out again and I'll say, right, Alex, so in particular, the bits I wanted to highlight for you were the things that you were asking about in your mm -hmm. request for information. So I'll do a bit of personal stuff <laughs> and I'll transition out, another demo, transition, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, You've got a sort of half an hour, 45 minute presentation, mm -hmm. which the client feels is very personalized. Yeah, you've gone above them. and beyond. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they go, hey, nobody's ever done that before. <laughs> and then they share it in internally with their team. Mm -hmm. And then they look good as well because somebody's gone to the trouble of creating a presentation specifically for them. Yeah. Um, and, and it looks like because of Ecamm, it looks like nothing they've ever seen before. Mm -hmm. And so they're kind of, wow. And you look so different from all the other vendors on the marketplace then because they've just sent in a cut and paste proposal that looks like every other proposal. Yeah. That I mean, And they're probably reading half a dozen of these that look almost identical. Um, so it's a real differentiator. For sure. And I've only is. just started doing it, but, you know, so far so good. Yeah. And Today, I got feedback from, from one client um, that we're through to the next stage of the uh, proposal. And, and it's purely down to the fact that you know, we put everything together in one place and they could go see it very easily. Yeah. And they were kind of like, well, nobody else has done anything like that. <laughs> and just, just for that reason, you get through to the next stage. So, yeah, yeah be, be different, you know, challenge the norm. And... and yeah. And you can get somewhere really cool. Yeah, and I think, um, and this is similar to what to what you experience probably on LinkedIn as well, but, you know, in this space, people want it to be easy and they want to feel like it was 
curated or made for them. And they want to look, everyone wants to look professional and look capable and look smart, right? So they would, they say that in in general on LinkedIn, people aren't going to interact with your content in any way, unless it's going to reflect well on them, right? Because they don't want a potential client or a boss or a colleague or a coworker to see them, you know, saying something that makes them appear as though they don't know what they're talking about or ask, you know, asking questions that might make them feel as though they, you know, are not performing at their best. So I, yeah, I think, I think your goal of kind of making it easy, you know, giving them some anonymity if they don't want to be able to, you know, comment directly or, you know, or these presentations that you're putting together, I think are really clever because they, they make it so that the recipient is the one shining even more than you and the content that you're putting forward. So yeah, I think that's really, really clever and a a great approach and super easy to do in our software. So it's, you know, something that once you spend time practicing and playing, it's not, not overly difficult to put together for sure. No, and I think if I, if I knew I was a bit more structured with folders and libraries and profiles, it would be even better, but I'm not. (laughs) You'll get there. I, I'm, I'm finally starting to have profiles like down because we do so many different you know shows and content or one-offs and I, I feel like I've I've finally realized you know what where, what what I need to save as profiles and what I don't and what I you know can just build out uh Martin we have a question coming in um about your headphones what headphones are you using ah right they, these are I keep wanting to call them no ear headphones but they are <laughs> If they were no ear headphones, they would fall off, wouldn't they? So, but uh, they are out of ear headphones, awesome. which means they sit rather than sit in your ear, mm-hmm. which can be a bit sort of painful and distracting. They sit just in front of your ear, and they use the the, the bones etc. to uh, sort of send all the the sound waves uh, oh, so out cool. and about, and. I just find them way more comfortable than a big set of headphones mm-hmm. or ones that go in your ear and then uh, are dropping out all the time. Yeah, so. I'm, I've been doing that. So Paul did post my <laughs> link to mine, which I actually I really enjoy as far in general. It took me a little bit to get used to, but they mine do that. So if that's going to annoy you, <laughs> go go with Martin's recommendation. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're yeah you're in ear monitors. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, always, always a good thing to have when you're doing interviews or just in general. I, I feel like I'm constantly trying to find where my headphones are so I can listen to a video or make listen to an audio note. Um, yeah, thanks, Paul, for dropping that link. And I see Diana hanging out. Hey, always great to see you, Diana. Uh, awesome. So I have a couple questions about sort of your pre kind of pre COVID days versus now. So you came from this background of doing these in-person events and in real life events. Um, have you sort of pivoted and replaced that with larger virtual events or are you just more in this like live video or video production in a professional environment space? So um, right at the beginning, I did sort of start off thinking, right, what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. And I went out and I got myself a giant uh, Microsoft Surface Hub Oh, wow. Which is like this giant 50 inch uh, screen with a, um, a camera on the top of it that mm-hmm. follows you around the room. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, I've seen those before. Uh, I started to do some big Teams meetings. Mm-hmm. I think I had about 50 people at the first one. Oh, wow. Um, and got some great engagement. But it, it was almost impossible to work out who turned up and who was watching and yeah. how to follow them up or, mm-hmm. you know, who said what, um, because there wasn't really any, uh, log off the particular comments. Mm-hmm. And so you had no control over anything. And then I think things sort of moved on and people started to do virtual events. And mm-hmm. I went to a few and they were all diabolical. Um, <laughs> they really were terrible. And you, you didn't know, if you set up a stand, a virtual stand, mm-hmm. you couldn't tell who was visiting your stand, yeah. how many people were hanging out, um, who was waiting around in the room. Uh, nothing like that was yeah. possible. And of course, it's all moved on quite a lot in the period of two years. It really has. Everybody tried to get better at doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you've got the, the sort of the alter live stuff and mm-hmm. you know, all these platforms appearing that are way, way better than at the start of the pandemic, oh, yeah, for sure. we've almost come full circle that 
people are dying to meet each other now. Mm -hmm. um, in particular, I find uh, the vendors, um, the people mm -hmm. uh, who, who previously said, oh, I didn't get anything out of that event. <laughs> they all they all want to go to the events again because yeah. they suddenly realized oh actually we did get quite a lot out of the event mm -hmm. so uh, i think i'm in february this year doing my next event which is the first time for three years oh, wow. that we've done an event congrats um, that's so, exciting so we, we'll see what happens with that but i think the reality is a lot of these have become hybrid mm -hmm. as well yep um because you've got an equal amount of people who are dying to get back to the event mm -hmm. uh, as have become used to staying at home mm -hmm. and going to get the kids from school or you know picking up uh, the dog from the vet or whatever it happens to be rather than driving two hours to go to a conference yeah if they realize they can stay at home and watch some of it then they will yeah and they may not turn up to your event at all so you're almost your hands are tied to do some sort of hybrid uh, a version of events. Mm -hmm. And I think nearly all meetings are going that way as well. Yeah. So today I had a meeting with uh, six or seven people in a room in London and two people um, in India. So awesome. that, that was us in a kind of hybrid. Seven of them are sitting around a conference table with a conference cam and then there's two people in India. And I think that most meetings are going to go that way. Mm -hmm. And of course, the beauty of that, if you have ecam is they're all sitting there going, "Where are you? Wait, how come your image you is so that? clear?" <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so, oh. so that's 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 kind of, I think, the the both conferences and meetings in particular, the meetings element will be hybrid. Yeah. Um, some of the conference organizers are saying, right, we're not doing any hybrid or online stuff because mm -hmm. we're going to force you to come to the events. And mm. speaking to some of them, it's kind of worked a bit, but not that much because people have just got used to the fact that they don't have to necessarily travel. And, and one of the benefits, actually, of the virtual events, I found was getting hold of speakers mm -hmm. suddenly became really easy yeah because, yeah you know, exactly i wasn't it's a lower asking lift them, for them. To, yeah so if i was asking you to fly over from the us to speak for an hour <laughs> or 45 minutes that's yeah. kind of a long way yeah. to come to do something mm -hmm. and you know i then have to foot the expenses for that as well mm -hmm. so to be able to get um you know, a cio or or somebody like that to come along and speak virtually at an event I suddenly found that was actually quite easy to do yeah because i was saying give me half an hour of your time and they would go fine you know half an hour of my time i'm, mm -hmm. I'm on zoom and teams all the time anyway so you know that's that's not an issue so from that perspective the virtual events were, were kind of good because you could get hold of people um but yeah you know, definitely that's... yeah i think it, it opened up to a much wider group because you had definitely access to a lot more you know, different kinds of speakers and sponsors and partners and people who are help who could help you create the event itself. But you also had the ability to pull in, at least we found on our end, a much more international audience of folks who would have loved to have come to an in-person event, but, you know, lived on the other side of the world or, you know, or it was just much too expensive for them to even be able to think about. All of a sudden, it's a much easier lift for them to say, oh, yeah, okay, like I'll, you know, I'll, take a day off work or I'll, you know, I'll move things around so I'm able to catch this content or I'll catch part of it live. And then, you know, I'll access the rest of the content later on my own time and still be, you know, interactive and, and feel like they're part of it. I think what always suffers in those kinds of situations is the, the hallway track, as we call it, right? Like the, the ability to network and spend time with mm -hmm. people is always going to be easier and be, probably form deeper relationships in person than it's going to online. There are ways to counter that, but that that's, I think is one of the biggest challenges is trying to make sure that everyone feels as though they are together, even though we're not physically to get together in the same space. Yeah. Again, I think it's swings and roundabouts. And obviously one of the things that you do is organize your post uh, conference content mm -hmm. in a way that's easy, easily accessible yep. and that you can come see it later. Yep. And I don't think most event organizers do that very well. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is absolutely key. If you're going to have content 
that mm -hmm. you're able to come back and look at it rather than just have a, a four hour stream mm -hmm. of the whole event that, that somebody's got to sit and wade through to try and get to the bit they want to. Yeah. Um, the other the other advantage of having an in person conference is you you almost can lock the door for the yes. day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're, they're not going anywhere. They're not else. going anywhere. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You you've you've probably captured their attention a lot more in person than you're going to online, right? Because you in person, mm. you know, you might be able to pull out your phone and you know be looking like you're taking notes or whatever, but you probably feel a little bit bad about that and because <laughs> there's yeah. enough people around you that you, you feel as though you've made an investment of your time and your money to be there. Whereas online, I'm, I'm certainly even guilty of, you know, I'm, I'm listening. And like you said, I also have, you know, my phone and, you know, there's probably a couple things I'm popping in and out to do or other people are talking with me. So it, it does make it harder to compete. It means that, like you, we said at the beginning of this, that if you're going to put on a virtual event, whether it's a live stream or, you know, or recorded video or a full event that you better hope that your speakers are going to show up with more than a set of PowerPoint presentations <laughs> or, or, you know, just really dull content be, because you're going to have to hold attention a lot more than if, if you were physically in front of them, it's much, much harder. You have to get creative. Hmm. Tatiana says hybrid is in high demand. I'm even thinking about how I can offer the option in my college classes for students that would otherwise be absent. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, and again, I think that's a space where, it, you, again, you're going to have to think, you know, how, how can you hold their attention? It's easy to kind of get them, well, easy-ish, I guess, to get them to show up. But um, to keep them there without all the other distractions around them is the, is the challenge, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I want to show, Martin, I know you, you sent this along in advance. So we're going to jump to our, our, see, see our normal scene the, the Katie slash Diana Whoa. and Doc helped Whoa. build scene <laughs> <laughs> over here to this incredibly fun scene. <laughs> Something like this, right? I think is awesome. Like, and there you have your, your QR code that you're talking about. We have the Ecamm logo. We have our names. We feel like we're in like a studio. There's some movement to it. Things like this that you've been playing with have just been, again, really creative and I think give people a lot of ideas of what's possible. It, it, you don't have to do a presentation or a, or a stream where it's just the traditional, just, you know, side by side with our names at the bottom at the most or a logo in the corner. You can really, you know, move yourself around or feel part of the presentation or create these really amazing dynamic environments. Mm. Yeah, I think it's just, you know, your imagination is the only limit really mm -hmm. and th this you know this doesn't quite work this one because I had to squeeze us both into the space <laughs> that was meant to be just for me so it's not quite working but we've still got this, oh no wait uh, I, gotta you know, pull, I gotta pull myself yeah. away I was gonna say I could move myself around hang on hang on I'll have to move myself above to do it then I can so I can see I could I could I could drift off <laughs> I'll maybe show you one in a minute where I've got it a bit better. But the, the idea of being able to create um, in the background, you know, a bit of movement so if it looks a little bit different, uh, that, that kind of works for me um, as a bit of fun. And this is just, you know, it's just a graphic that I've grabbed off um, in Vato Elements and then dropped in uh, a couple of little bits of movement, yeah. cut some holes in the back and the orange bits you can see moving around, that's actually a keynote background that's that's running there. That's awesome. So n none of it is anything that you're having to pay large sums of money to do and you can do it yourself in, in a, you know, an hour or something like that, depending. Once you know what you're doing, it's a lot quicker. It took me a long time the first couple of times, but... <laughs> I kind of got the hang of it now a little bit better. But, um, yeah. And it's stuff that you can play with when you're like, again, you all of you watching are more than welcome to jump into our community space and practice. That's literally what Martin does often. It <laughs> jumps in and yeah. moves things around or asks for feedback or, you know, you could, you could build this entire scene or your own scene live and, you know, get that feedback or that help. Let oh. me have a, all right, hang on, look at wait. another one that I've got. I've got another one here. If I hit the right button. <laughs> Always the trick. iPad. Keynote. I think that's great, though, about what you said about how it takes 
t- it takes time the first time. We we all need to give ourselves a little bit of mercy. It's not it's not immediately going to be perfect the first time. Give yourself some time to really build it out, but then it will get easier every time that you do it from there on. It, it, it does. Each time you do it, I think it's a lot easier. Mm-hmm. So um, what I've done, like in this one, it's very much the same, except for obviously I'm um, not got any background here, so I've just set my uh, green screen as transparent, and then I can have my um, keynote going on and that's sitting there in the background and rather than me um, having something that looks like an, an iPad or something uh, like a little circle in the corner of the screen um, I can be using the background as effectively uh, my uh, keynote slide deck which is exactly what it is but I've still got that little bit of movement going on albeit very slowly and that's so uh, it doesn't distract attention but all I'm really doing here is bringing together um, a keynote deck with a bunch of stuff in the background and if I want to start bringing in uh, something like my uh, QR codes then I can do that and I can say hey go here for some product information Um, and then you know have that disappearing back out again and just be talking through my deck and this is the sort of thing that I use for those um, proposals that I was talking about earlier on. Yeah, it looks so, great. You know, I'd be talking about stuff like this and and then uh, going on to talk about the client's uh, architecture, maybe bringing up some of their logos and things like that. And that's how the proposal would look. And for me, I just feel that this sort of format, I, I kind of look a bit more like I'm in the room with you and talking mm-hmm. to you. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas just me in the corner of a screen in a little circle um, and and a big square with a PowerPoint deck or a keynote deck on it doesn't quite look as um, uh, engaging. So it, it's kind of not meant to look real. It's meant to look a little bit out there, um, but it's meant to be something a bit different. So uh, that that's kind of um, where I am at the moment. Next week, I'll probably decide this looks terrible <laughs> and I want to do something entirely different. But but this week, I'm thinking, oh, I, I think I quite like that. But you know, I've been here before. I changed my mind a lot. And uh, uh, so, so this is what it's looking like today. Uh, next week, it could be totally different. Um, I wonder whether I should try dropping it. Can I drop a comment into this area as well? Yeah, I, I think. I oh, no, I don't think you can because you're a guest. I'm saying, yeah, but here, here's a couple. So there's like. You can. Yeah, yeah. Tatiana so. says, great scene. You got a wow. You got love it. <laughs> you got scene looks great. So. Uh, yeah, no, it's this is very, very nice. Yeah, I think, I mean, and just imagine um, like this looks amazing is a recorded video and something that you're sending over to a client. This looks awesome if you're doing it as a live stream presentation or a workshop, but it, it's also great again in that like Zoom or team space. Like if, if, if you showed up and you were in your little, you know, your little cube, you know, along with everyone else on that grid, and then you took over and had this and they made you full screen. Imagine, you know, all of the different feedback that you would get, all the positive comments you would get because you just are doing something that they're not used to seeing, right? So yeah, it, yeah. it certainly and, helps you stand out. And this is, this is literally, it's just, this is just keynote. There's nothing else going on other than keynote. Pop myself in the corner here. Uh, <laughs> mini Katie in the corner. <laughs> you can be mini in the corner. So, so yeah, and I've intentionally left that space. So if I was doing a live, uh, then that space down the bottom is for comments. Um, and I would be bringing those up and engaging with people uh, in, in a live. If it was a live, if it's a recording, I might be bringing up, um, you know, highlighted points or something like that that I wanted to talk about um, with the client. So um, it, it's just totally and utterly different from anything else anybody's doing as yeah. far as I'm aware. Um, so yeah. you know, I suppose, you know, you, you've got, you can appear live in Keynote now and indeed in PowerPoint as well. Mm-hmm. So if you want to go bouncing around the screen in Keynote, you can do that. <laughs> By all means. <laughs> Upside down, back to front. I've done it, right? Go back in, go back in the community. I've tried it, yeah. Uh, and been flying around in aeroplanes and stuff like that. Um, and you can do all of that. Whether or not you, my business clients want to see that, I don't know. I doubt it. I doubt um, it, yeah. But, do you but yeah, it, 
have you have you seen I know I watched a few of your presentations in um in the community where you were doing things like um game shows or like little like games and triggers to catch attention do you do you do those on LinkedIn lives are you doing those are you just playing around with that to see what's what's possible I feel like that's always one of the hard things that we've never we've never quite perfected is like how do you yeah, other than our wheel of wonder, <laughs> how do we do those little games or uh, or fun things that get people playing around? Yeah, so I have done a bit of that and playing about with um, game show stuff. I started to do a few of those and did some giant, complicated, multi-action stream deck stuff and all sorts uh, for some game shows and and that was great fun. I could get like three people on and have buzzers going on and flashing lights behind them and, and all sorts of things. Um, quite a lot of work, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then I did try a couple of reveals of um, merch type reveals. Oh, of cool. Tiles on a screen mm -hmm. where things were all hidden behind the tiles and the tiles would rotate and reveal items that you then had to match up. And then I did a, a kind of a scratch card thing where you could have a scratch card on the screen and then use your iPad and a green pencil to reveal bits behind uh, each element on the screen. That's so fun. Which is kind of totally the reverse of what most people are doing, which is drawing on the screen. Yeah. I was using, I was using the green screen to scrape stuff off. <laughs> to erase, and, yeah. <laughs> and it did look like you're doing a scratch card there. And exactly oh. on the screen and and revealing things, and that is so such those a fun sort of games, idea. yeah, they they're just a bit of fun. And again, it, it's the power of eCam and just having to think about, oh, I wonder what would happen if I put a load of squares on the screen, and then started to use the green pen to write on the screen, and then it, of course it just reveals whatever's behind it on yeah. the screen, oh, and and suddenly so you have scratch card city. So, um, <laughs> well, you have, you have, uh, Justice Anderson says that there are solutions consultant and this would work well on solution demos, right? Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And Gretchen wants to know how you did it. <laughs> You're, you'll have to release a tutorial on how, on how you put together the scene. I'm sure a lot of people that end mm. looks like an, an ask for the scratch card. Yeah. It'd be great to see some sort of behind the scenes at some point of how do you, how do you actually approach building yeah. out a lot of that i'm sure people would love to see something like that yeah what well, one day i'll get around to creating a course you know so yeah um, yeah it, it'll just be so random though i just have to have a <laughs> ecam randomness or something like that course i love it yeah. i think it'd be great we've been talking a lot about uh, about vlogmas which is one one of the places that you started and thinking mm -hmm. through like how we could come up with some fun challenges to get everyone doing the same thing we should we should have uh we should have a scratch card as, as a thing. Everyone build build up their own scratch card. Uh, Tatiana, hey, says, you've, got the, you've got you've got the merch. You can do the giveaway. We've got the, yeah. True. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Did you scratch them or did you have guests scratch them? <laughs> I, I did the scratching of the scratch mm. card, but what I did first of all was um, I had like a matrix of all of the little giveaways. Mm -hmm. um, let's say sixty uh, four or five by four or five squares, and I would flick around to reveal what was behind them all um, so very very quickly yeah. it would reveal all the different items one at a time mm -hmm. um, but in a random order so you have to watch the screen to say and then I'd say to my guest okay where are the two items that you want to match up and they would say a1 and a5 mm -hmm. like battleships when you're a kid <laughs> so I'd scrape off a1 and a5 and no you're wrong so next person you can have a go and uh, so on and so forth and uh, it, it, it kind of worked as a bit of fun it worked quite well actually um, and again just nobody had seen that before but uh, hey it, it was it kind of worked anyway yeah. <laughs> Gretchen says it would work well for storytelling yeah exactly more than just reading from a circle yeah see I'm I'm the example of don't just be in the circle don't don't put Katie in the circle <laughs> I should go back to my other scene shouldn't I now to... no you're fine all right here yeah we'll go back to there we yeah, go. There just, we go. There we go. We're back. Now we're otherwise very. Otherwise, I'm going to be off in the corner somewhere, aren't I? If I no, we're dour <laughs> and professional in this one. <laughs> mm. 
Oh my goodness. I love it. Well, you've gotten me thinking really creatively this entire hour. We have like all these workshops that I'd love to think through. We should, we should certainly talk. Maybe we could do it like a creativity or an engaging streams workshop. Cause I think it's, I think it's really neat what you're doing. And I love that you're, I really, again, I, I appreciate so much that you're doing it publicly in our group so that people can get really great ideas and play around and bounce ideas off. I think it's, that's fun. I love the collaboration. Yeah. I think, um, I'm definitely more of a the ideas guy than the teacher guy. So, you know, if you, if you want to go learn keynote, go see Bradley. If you want to go <laughs> learn tech stuff, go see Alec or go see Adrian. Or mm-hmm. If you just want ideas, uh, then then by all means, you know, have a look at the streams. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm delighted to engage with anybody who wants to have a chat about stuff. Um, but, but it will be a kind of a lightning lesson of... Uh, yeah, what you need to do now is this, 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 and uh, and you you just have to keep up. <laughs> That's okay. We can keep up with yeah. all of that. I love it. I had a question. I'm scrolling back to find it. It was about your QR code. I think where did it go? Someone wanted to know what you're using, what tool you used. To, oh, there it is. Val. Val wants to know what your QR code creator was that you're using. Valerie, just for you, I shall go and have a look. Bear with me. <laughs> oh, we should play music. Oh, oh yeah. no! In this profile, I only have, I only have like the weird, funny sounds. Triangle. <laughs> Triangle. Wait, uh, Valerie, it's IQR. That's what it is. IQR. Uh, Let me type this in here. IQR for Val. Um. There we go. Look at. We can put it on the screen. Ta da! <laughs> everyone everyone go. can go make awesome QR codes. I love it. My goodness, as as usual, we're we're here at the top of the hour. Is there anything else that you wanted to add, Martin? Anything that anything we didn't cover? No, just, just just you know, I, I think a big thank you to everybody who's out there in the community and does just drop things in and to all the great teachers and yeah. people like that. Um uh, I found it all to be, you know, really inspirational. And uh, uh, I, I love just all the new features appearing every day. And I know that I'm sitting there and Ken and Glenn have produced like the ability to, to stream to 10 different platforms. And I'm going, hey, but look, you can do sepia tone and blurring on the cameras. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> that one's for you. That one's right for you. I love it. Yeah, the sepia yeah, tone. They, they must have been sort of sitting there going, God, we've, we've spent hours and hours doing all this stuff. <laughs> And they, this guy then goes, oh yeah, no, sepia tone and blurring. I, I'm loving that. So, no, there's so. those were those were requests. You're not alone in those asks. So I'm glad I'm glad mm. that you're thinking of it. Oh look, Canva makes QR codes too. Thanks, Todd. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of amazing tools out there. Well, I again, I cannot thank you enough for your time. I'm looking forward to being on on your side of the pond in the next couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, and hopefully we'll have to have you back again on soon and, and that you'll participate in upcoming Vlogmas plans or anyone between Martin and everyone watching, if there's fun things we should be doing for Vlogmas this year, now's a good time to send those ideas along. <laughs> ideas, people. We'd love to hear what would make it a fun and engaging and interesting experience for everyone. Oh, Martin's yeah, I, I, channel. I, I was definitely coming on. Awesome. What's your What's your channel? Do your Do your shout out of where people can find you. Uh, LinkedIn is the best place to find me. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got some stuff on YouTube, but it's just uh, really a few videos of interviews that I've done. So they will be incredibly boring for ninety nine percent of the world because they're all about technical stuff. Um, so I think probably just skip through the community. Look up my name on the community and then mm-hmm. just scroll through some of the mad videos that I've been doing for the past year so and just fun. randomly pick one out and they'll all be different from one another. Yeah, and leave comments on them. We'll have just like nothing but Martin's videos at the top from everyone commenting them. It'll be awesome. Yeah, Val says, cool. thank you. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today, Val. We appreciate it. And Tatiana says, thanks for the creative inspiration. So yeah, I love having these kind of amazing ideas on to see what's possible, see what everyone will come up with. Todd's Todd's getting to work. <laughs> <laughs> Todd's, Todd's ready already, isn't he? So, yeah. Todd's ready already. I love it. All right. Well, I'm going to shoot over, uh, hang out for a minute if you want, Martin, or if you need to bounce, totally fine. But <laughs> we're going to shoot over here 
to remind everyone that we have an episode of Marshall Create. So if you want to see Marshall's background in real life, you can join us on Thursday, October 13th at 2 p.m. Eastern right here on YouTube. We have Building Blocks coming up with Anna and Fulgens. That's on Friday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern. And then next week's uh, episode of The Flow, we have a special guest on and we're talking all about podcasting mindset. So if you're not quite in the right mindset for podcasting yet, this is a good episode for you to join and figure out how you can get there. And then final reminder that if you miss sleep into podcasting, that's okay. We have replays as we were saying earlier in this episode. So you can um, swing on over to merch.ecam.com and you can grab yourself one of these fancy guides. The guides include a replay pass so that you can watch all of the videos that you missed. And we will... (laughs) <laughs> we will catch you next time on Meet the Fam. And you can find Martin on LinkedIn or hang out in the Ecam community, ecam.tv slash community. <laughs> Doc says he Perfect. needs some more coffee. <laughs> on that note, we will all grab some coffee and we will see you all next time. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Martin. See you next time. Bye for now. Cheerio.